Saudi Cup, nice to see you. I've decided I'm gonna do a little video for you, a short story. It's a story that I share with quite a few people. Um, and I sometimes think it's, uh, it's quite a significant one and I should share it more widely, but I don't always get, I don't always get the chance to, uh, to meet as many people as I'd like to uh, in the workplace. And so I thought I'd share this little story as a video instead. Okay, so let me tell you how this goes. A few years ago, a friend of mine, she's called Kun Sai Pin. She worked for Thai Leisure Group for a bit, actually, as, a, as an advisor. Here she is, there's a photo of her. Um, we're both sampling some Thai wine, Monsoon Valley, it's lovely Thai wine. That's me and her a few years back. You can see I look a bit younger there. Um, I said to her, uh, Kun Sai Pin, I would love to spend some time in a temple, a few weeks, even maybe a few months, if I could find the time, just to sort of stand back from it all and, and, and reflect a bit and uh, have some uh, an experience um, quite unlike any other. Um, and she said, look, go, why don't you go to a temple and have a look and see what you think? So I said, yeah, I'd like to do that. I'd like to go around a temple and meet the monks and so on. Um, so anyway, she lined me up with a visit to a temple in, in England uh, called the Wat, Wat means temple, by the way, uh, Wat Buddha Patipa. Here it is. Uh, it's uh, not too far from Wimbledon um, in southwest London. It's a beautiful building, as you can see. It's not all that. There's a sort of more conservative building, let's say, uh, in the grounds. But there are quite a few monks there, and it's in beautiful grounds. And um, I went there. She put me in, t in charge with the Ajahn, which is like the master of the monks. And I contacted this person and we arranged a visit. And indeed, it was a lovely day. I went there by train and got a taxi to the temple. Um, and um, I, uh, I, I spent a day with the monks and um, I really enjoyed it. I sat in on some chanting. Um, I watched them in the allotments uh, and I talked about the, uh, the, the, the values of the Thai Buddhist philosophy. They, we talked about some of the Bali language. I even got downloads from chants and started chanting as well. It was really good. Um, and it was, a, it was a lovely experience. And at the end of this experience, at the end of this day, I said to the Ajahn, uh, thank you so much. Um, I wonder if I could, uh, have you got a souvenir or something? Because I need to lock this in somehow. I need to remember this day, this day away from it all. And, um, and so if there's something I can take uh, without stealing it, obviously, <laughs> something I could take away, that'd be great. And he gave me a bit of a knowing look and said, follow me. Um, and we walked from the building to the actual temple and we walked up these steps into the temple itself. As we were walking, he said, make sure you haven't got your phone. He said, that's still in the room, isn't it? I said, yes, it's still there. He said, well, we, don't, we certainly don't want the phone in the, in the middle of this. And uh, he was wearing his uh, orange saffron uh, uh, cloak, you know, the, the one piece um, cloth, basically, that, that they wear. And um, I walked with him into the temple. And in the middle of the temple, we sat down opposite each other in, uh, on, a, on an open carpet and uh, he said, um, I want you to do an exercise for me. And he produced a little, what looks like a sort of bell, not exactly a bell shape, but a little sort of dome and a little clanger. I don't know if I've got the right words for these. And he said, very simple, I'm gonna ring, I'm gonna clang this, uh, this, this, this bowl, let's say, and uh, when you can't hear the noise of it anymore, I want you to put your hand up. I said, okay, fair enough, let's do it. So, ding, I was listening, I was listening. I put my hand up and he said, no, that's not very good. That's not very good at all. He said, let's try again one more time. Let's try again. Uh, this time he said, try and focus on the noise, not anything else. Don't be distracted. He said, I can tell you're distracted by everything around here. Just focus on the noise. Bing. I was quite pleased with myself. I could hear it for longer this time. Put my hand up. He said, it's getting better, but you've got a long way to go. Uh, I said, okay. He said, right. He said, forget about everything to do with work, forget about text messages, emails, forget about the time you're here, how long you've got, forget about what you might have promised someone about a taxi or meeting someone or whatever, or whatever you're doing next, just focus exactly on this, just focus on this moment in time. I said, okay, and I felt a bit guilty that I hadn't maybe done that properly. So anyway, he rang the bell again, ding. This time I could hear it for longer and longer and longer. I put my hand up, he said, okay, now you're getting somewhere, that's great. Let's really try and go for it now. Now we've got that as a starting point. He said, I think there's other things clustering your mind. He said, just forget about the past. 
forget about the future, just absolutely focus on this very moment in time, that there's nothing more important than this. Really focus, put all your intensity into it. And bing, he went again. And this time I could hear it for a lot, lot longer. Finally, I could not hear it anymore. I put my hand up, he said, good, good. Okay, great. One more time, he said, let's do it one more time. And then he said, then I think we've got it. Then I think I can leave you with something that you'll remember. And he rang it again, bing. And he said, stop, before that, he said, I want you to completely forget where you are, take away all in inhibitions and just relax into it and just absolutely focus on this thing and nothing else. And I thought, actually, I'm probably a bit guilty of being a bit self-conscious and wondering about myself. And I thought, I won't give a shit about that. Just relax into it. And I kind of laid back and relaxed. I closed, my eyes were closed throughout the other exercises as well, but I really closed my eyes this time. And I thought, I don't care what, this, what he even thinks to me or anything. And I focused on it. I listened intensely. And then he went for it. Bing. And you know what? This noise went on and on and on. I could still hear it. And I thought, wow, this is beautiful. It sounded really nice as well. And after a while, I don't know, it must have been 40 seconds or something, I put my hand up and he said, good, I think we're done. And I thought, wow, that was quite interesting. But I wasn't to realize what actually had happened until I left the temple. When we walked out of the temple, it's very quiet in there. And uh, the bell really is on its own. But when I came out, I didn't realize how much noise there is around. And oh my God, it was like someone had turned the volume up of life about 50 fold. Honestly, the birds were singing like it was a brand new dawn. I could hear cars on a road driving nearby. I thought I didn't even realize there was a road near this place. I could hear aircraft in the sky and there was, didn't seem to be aircraft right above us. I could hear people clattering. There were some monks working in the garden there and I could hear them chattering to each other. And I, it was almost deafening. But what surprised me also, it wasn't just my hearing that had been cranked up. It was also my visual sort of recognition. I could spot, I could just, everything was just heightened awareness and alertness. And um, anyway, I went to the office, um, I collected my phone and I thought, I don't, I'm scared of my phone. I don't want to put it on. I'll keep it off for a bit because I want to keep this and maintain it. And I did, I kept it for a bit. I walked back, I didn't leave. I was going to get a taxi, but I said no to the taxi. And I walked um, back into uh, back towards town, and I really enjoyed the experience of hearing things I hadn't heard before or heard for ages. I could hear nature. I spotted little things, and you know it was absolutely genuine. I had just had this in this moment of realization that my head was full of so much, and also I realized that I'd done so many things, sort of half baked, listened to conversations while I was actually thinking about something else or looking at something while I was also looking at something else. And my head was like a spaghetti with all these things. And that ability to focus on one thing really intensely was actually really enjoyable. And I realized that's how the monks spend their lives because they remove all the distractions, all the temptations and just focus on the here and now. They savor every piece of their food by eating one fork at a time, chewing it one by one. They look at things and digest it and savor it and live in the moment. And I, it has dwindled away, I've got to be honest with you. But every time... I think about the temple or I see a monk or when I see a reflect on our values, which is a lot, it brings me back to that moment. And sometimes when I'm having a conversation with someone and I might be urged to veer off a little bit, I think about that. I think I owe that person and this conversation the intensity of my focus and the moment. And a lot of you will know that I say this and I've done a few quizzes with you, jokingly. I say, what is the most important place in the world? And some people are stretching their minds and thinking, is it Mount Everest or is it the Seychelles or something? No, the answer is always the same. It's where you are, because the most important place is here, because we're engaged in this. And this is the intensity of the of the conversation. This is this is the moment. This is where it's happening. So where's the most important place? It's here. Where's the most what what is the most important time? I think, you know, the answer to that. It's obviously now. Everything in the past has had its time. Yeah, of course it's important and it's something we can reflect on and learn from and so on, but it's not gonna change the world. The future, who knows? Let's live in the moment, enjoy the moment, give the moment the respect it deserves. 
and let's give each other that time. Let's give each other that focus. Let's give our customers that focus. Let's give everything we do, whether it's writing an email, answering a phone call, meeting a customer, speaking to a colleague, spending time with, you know, with, your, with your lover, or your partner, whatever, um, whatever it is, let's do it to the very best and then we'll be good people and we'll deliver the best, our full personality every time. And this is the fourth of our values as well. Uh, we've got Ojai Sai, um, which is caring from the heart. We've got Hardao, which is our st high standards, our five star. We've got our Samaki, which is working together. And then we've got Sanuk. And a lot of people say Sanuk is fun, but actually Sanuk is more than that. It's about living in the moment, enjoying the moment. And when some people say, oh, this is good because it makes the day go faster. If you're having to do something that makes the day go faster, you want to be doing something else. Because if you're trying to get part time to slip you by, that's no way to live life. Make sure you're doing everything you can to enjoy every moment and make sure you find something you love doing or if you're forced to do something, make sure you love doing it anyway. This is the principle of Sanuk. Live for the day, savor the moment, put everything into that time and then good things will happen. You'll enjoy it and everybody around you will feel that positive vibe as well. That's it. That's a little story I wanted to tell you. It's something that's important to me, something I live with every day and I hope it is good uh, to hear as well. Thank you very much, Cochrane Cup, Study Cup, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.